Hi, my name is Fred Morris. I am the Business Development Manager for Bruker Optics Compact Microanalysis and Life Science product line. Today I'm going to be focusing on our standalone FTIR Lumos microscope. It is our most recent, most state-of-the-art FTIR microscope we've brought to market and specifically I'm going to focus on particulate analysis in the pharmaceutical industry. So in a lot of cases uh, in formulations or even raw materials particulates are filtered out and put on some type of filter paper whether that's uh, just micron paper or gold foil. In this case we've got some nice particulates on here and I'm going to utilize the ATR objective on the Lumos to identify what those particulates are so they don't get into our final product. So first I'm going to put it right here on the stage. I'm going to come over to the software and in the software I have some preloaded points. In particular I can go to my filter paper position and what this does is it brings the stage to the best point of focus for my filter paper. Now from here I can use the joystick and if you can see I've identified a whole bunch of different particulates on this filter paper. So using my LED illumination, I can change the brightness, I can use dark field, I can use polarization technique, all to change the way I look at my particles visually. I have autofocus and I have mosaic building of a larger area which I'm going to do because I want to see an overall picture of my particulates here. So first off I'm going to come and I'm going to add a border point. just so we can get an overall view of our filter paper. Okay. Now I can still just use the mouse here and click to individual spots on my larger image and you can see my live image moves to those places automatically. Once the sample is on the stage there's really no reason for me to go back to the sample stage or go back to the microscope because there's no knobs everything in the system is completely automated. Now this brings us to our background mode, where we can choose an existing background, measure a background once, measure a background after so many times, that would be more if you were doing a large mapping experiment, or measure the background in a corner aperture. In this case, I'm going to match my background aperture to the actual size of the particle to keep my baseline nice and flat. So now you can see the stage drops out of position, and the ATR automatically driven down by encoded piezo motors comes out and we'll take the background measurement automatically. Again, no user interference. The aperture blades come into position as well. Using oblique illumination, they position themselves. And now I move to defining my measurement positions. Here I can choose the pressure settings I use for my ATR. Now my ATR objective itself in the post has three built-in pressure sensors, low, medium, and high. I typically start with low just to protect my sample. If I need better contact or, or more pressure on the sample, I'll choose medium or high afterwards. Now here I can choose discrete positions, discrete points. I can switch to my overview image. I can choose a line array, although this is not a particular sample for that type of measurement or even a mapping experiment as well. But in this case, I'm going to again go right back to my zoom position, go to my discrete point, click on my sample. Now my aperture is too big for my sample. My sample is a lot smaller than the 100 micron aperture that the ATR tip gives us. So I'm just going to close down my aperture a little bit, rotate it so that I only see particle of interest and not the filter paper around it. Again, the aperture blades close down, they rotate into position. And this time we're going to take a background according to that very well defined aperture I placed on our particle. So now the analysis is complete, I can go ahead and see in our chemical imaging window our visual picture. So here up here we can see our visual image along with our overview image. And then down here we see a nice high signal to noise spectra. Now from here I can right click and extract the spectra, I can search the spectra in a library and I get a nice result.